Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. We are going to talk about Fender's student models, the uh, the Champ, and such, and then we're also going to talk about this uh, new amp that uh, Fender is making now, and and uh, was gracious enough to uh, to send to me. So yeah, we're going to do a little history on the Champ, and uh, then talk about this amp. And, uh, but first, we've got a little, uh, a little, you know, housekeeping, house cleaning, I guess. Uh, so in past episodes, one, people asked about, um, in the Buck Owens episode, I talked about how Buck and the band would all tune down a half step. So they would tune to E flat instead of E on their guitars. And I didn't know the reason why. And so Casper Rawls, who's an amazing Telecaster player in Austin, Texas, and in fact hosted uh, Buck Owens' birthday celebrations at the Continental Club back in the day uh, before Buck's passing, uh, he chimed in and he was there when Dan Fort interviewed Buck for Guitar Player Magazine in 1988. And in the interview, Buck indicated that the reason they tuned down was because the uh, original steel guitar player in Buck's band before Tom Brumley was a guy named Jay McDonald. And so Jay, when he was doing, uh, when they were doing some of the songs and he was using the pedals on his pedal steel, and of course they're pulling up the pitch, uh, he was having a really bad problem with one of the strings was popping all the time. And so they tuned down a half step and the, the problem was fixed. It didn't pop the string anymore, so they just did that for a while. And they, well, they did it for a long time. So anyway, so that's the answer to that. The other you know, housekeeping thing is in the Flood episode, I told of how there was an art gallery in Leaper's Fork that uh, was filled with these amazing vintage instruments. And I didn't say what happened to them, you know, because, of course, the area, you know, flooded. Well, Joe Glazer, who was the curator of the uh, vintage guitar exhibit that had Lloyd Lohr signed L5s and F5, you know, mandolins and guitars, and it had Marty Stewart's Clarence White guitar, prototype fenders, all sorts of stuff. And if you want to learn more about that, of course, watch the Flood episode. But anyway, Joe stayed with those guitars. And uh, when there was a tornado warning and all this other stuff going on, he stayed with them. And uh, yeah, and those guitars were fine. So there you have it, Joe Glazer <laughs> giving his life for, uh, you know, risking his life, I should say, for uh, vintage guitars. All right, so let's talk about Champs. Well, the first Champ came out in 19 1948, and it was, you know, kind of Fender's entry-level uh, student model. And that's kind of what it's always been to a degree. Uh, the, the amp, you know, originally, you know, was... Well, the classic champ is single-ended, which that means it only has one power tube, and that kind of limits the power. Uh, and it usually was a 6V6, which again, that gives you four to six watts tops. So the champ originally had a six inch speaker, then it got an eight inch speaker. Uh, you know, of course it went through the, uh, the different uh, iterations of, you know, the, the different looks of the tweed amps where, you know, of course you get to the narrow panel tweed and uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, we don't think of it this way, but the, uh, the Princeton was also a student model, hence the name Princeton. Also another, you know, amp that was part of the student lineup besides the Champ and the Princeton was the Harvard, which of course I've got my 59 Harvard, you know, back there. And uh, it's a little different in that it has two power tubes, while the uh, Tweed Princeton still only had one, but it had the addition of a uh, second input and it had a, a tone control where the Champ just had a volume control and a single input. All right, so then uh, the Champ, uh, you know, kind of stays the same, uh, except for maybe some cosmetic things, you know, of course, when, when the rest of the tweed amps go away, uh, it, it stays tweed for a while. And then it actually goes to black Tolex, but still has the top mounted, uh, you know, volume control, but it, it also gets the, uh, you know, the grill cloth like the black face amps. Uh, then finally in 64, it goes into the, f you know, forward facing, uh, controls like this, new Vibrachamp, 
and uh, you you get you know the champ and the introduction of the vibra champ, which you know one you know the the champ gets a volume you know and and you know and tone and then of course you get volume and you get uh, you know the speed and intensity for the uh, vibrato, and those amps kind of stay the same until 1983. Uh, of course, they change cosmetics to where you get like this drip edge in 67 to early 69. And uh, then you get to, you know, the regular silver face look. Um, but then in the in the early 80s, uh, Paul Rivera, you know, completely revamped the line and you get the Champ 2 that had two power tubes and you get the Super Champ, which of course is very uh, desirable. And, uh, you know, it had a you know, a little 10 inch speaker and it had reverb and it had, uh, you know, a, a lot more, you know, power. It had, you know, like 18 Watts instead of, you know, instead of five or six Watts. Then you get, you know, you get these, like when, when Fender, you know, changes hands in 85, you get the red knob champ 12, which had a 12 inch speaker and 12 Watts. Then you get the weird hybrid amp, like the champ S E 25 S E which had a solid state preamp and then had a, a, a tube power amp. It had two 5881s and had 25 watts. Really interesting amp, very short lived. Then you get to where the champ is kind of being used for these transistorized models. And, uh, and then it didn't until finally, you know, we get the, the tweed champ, you know, reissue and we get like the Clapton, you know, Vibra champ that was still tweed and, and top mounted controls. But this guy is Fender's, you know, kind of first foray into the, you know, what you would call the, uh, the forward facing tube era of champs, you know, the, or from basically from, you know, 64 through, you know, the early eighties. And, uh, it's, it's a really neat amp. And so I, I have to kind of say first off that, Fender sent this to me out of the blue. I didn't ask for this. And at first, when the box showed up, one, I was surprised that, you know, a fin you know, a big, you know, well, relatively big box, you know, showed up with, you know, Fender, you know, in you know, <laughs> all over the box. Um, and two, when I saw on the label that it was a, you know, the Vibra Champ, you know, reverb, I was a little concerned because, you know, to be perfectly honest, I do not like champs. I do not like single ended amps, which amps with one power tube. And the reason why is because of the small speaker, the small cab, and especially because of the one power tube, they tend to sound, well, small, really small. And, uh, you know, being a telly guy, and I like to play on the back pickup, uh, when I play through a champ, the only way you can get a decent sound is to get pretty distorted. And that's, I mean, if you watch my show, you can tell that. I tend to play kind of clean or maybe on the edge of breakup. So at first I just let the box sit there. And then finally I thought, well, you know, I ought to check it, check it out. So, you know, I hadn't looked on the internet about these things or anything. So it was all kind of a surprise. So I, uh, I looked at it and I was like, wait a second, they actually put a 10 inch speaker in this thing. So instead of the normal, you know, eight inch speaker that was in it, they put a 10 and it's a, and it's a Celestian speaker, which, I, you know, I'm a big Celestian fan. I think Blackface and, you know, Silverface, you know, Fenders just sound better with a Celestian type speaker. Uh, then the other thing was they had added verb to it. And uh, then, of course, I found out it was digital and I was a little bit dubious about that. But then, you know, I plugged in and I was very pleasantly surprised. So uh, this is probably the first, you know, single ended amp that I've ever uh, really, really cared for at all. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, you know, it has the really cool, you know, late, you know, mid 67 through early 69, uh, drip edge cosmetics, which I, I like. Uh, and then, you know, of course, again, the addition of the tin and uh, tube tremolo, but with the digital verb, it's a hall sound. Uh, you really get a nice sound. And, uh, you know, of course I was playing at the beginning doing kind of, I guess kind of like a variation of Bill Justice's, uh, what is that? Raunchy? Yeah.
hopefully you can notice how, you know, of course I've got it set at a little, about five and a half, that even the clean has a little bit of hair on it, which I, I, I like. It's, it's very nice sounding. And that, that was on the bridge pickup. And uh, I'm gonna turn the, well, maybe I'll go to the neck pickup and show you, you know, what it can do on the, on the neck. It can, you know, you can do good R&B stuff. tube tremolo and you've got the uh, the hall the digital hall reverb sound which is really nice uh, you can uh, you know take the tremolo off go back to the back pickup you can get good you know twangy full sound again because of the tin <laughs> for the clams uh yeah it just it has a big you know it has a pretty big full sound it's not the uh the near it's not your dad's champ as it were you know the, the the little sounding guy and and right now i have the bass on 10 okay so if you turn the bass down you know especially down to like four or something like that you get kind of you know more of what i think of as the old champ sound <laughs> Still sounds, you know, better than the, you know, the eight inch speaker and such, but still you kind of get that, that uh, smaller sound. So while I've got the bass down, I'm going to turn the volume up because right now I have it at like five and a half. I'm going to, let's just put it up to nine or uh, we'll just go up to 10. So then you can get, you know, more of the... Of course, I didn't turn the verb down, which you always have to turn the verb down whenever you uh, turn a, a Fender amp up hot. So you. So you can see it has, you know, just that, that old school overdriven, you know, fen Fender sound, which, you know, of course the, you know, the little guy has a little bit more of that fizzy, uh, you know, kind of uh, papery thing going on. Uh, you know, here I'll play just some single note lines using. bring it back down you know, five and a half I'm gonna bring the bass back up let's let's hear the uh, the verb and just so you can really hear it I'm gonna turn it all the way up to 10 uh, and here you can hear they, they put a little modulation on the uh, on the verb which is nice you know because at, at low settings you don't really notice it it just kind of fattens things up but of course if you turn it up high you can really hear it <laughs> for doing like volume swells, you know. Really, uh, yeah, pretty sounding amp. And I, the one of the real strengths of this is that uh, you know you have this little you know six watt amp 
that has verb and trim on it. And so, you know, you could really, you know, go and play like a, a little, you know, a little rehearsal or a little, you know, kind of coffee house, you know, gig and not have to bring any pedals if you didn't want to, you know, cause it, uh, it, you know, it kind of has everything that you would need, uh, you know, cause you know, I, I like, you know, using my Harvard, but usually when I bring the Harvard, you know, I, I kind of like to have verb and tremolo. So it's nice to have something that already has that. It really is kind of grab and go. It could take a, a telly and the Vibrachamp to play, uh, kind of a, a, a low volume kind of thing. And again, cause it's got the 10, doesn't have the little the little sound and uh, yeah, looks nice, sounds great. Uh, I think they I think uh, Fender did a, a great job on this uh, Vibra Champ Reverb amp, uh, 68 custom I believe, and of course the the blue uh, the blue light doesn't hurt. All right guys, well that's uh, that's kind of it it for today. Uh, I did. Uh, play my, uh, I know this guitar hasn't seen, uh, an Ask Zach in a while. This is my 1967, uh, Telly, late, you know, late 67, you know, cause it's got the, uh, you know, the CBS era logo. And the reason of course I got it out was, you know, to go along with this amp with the cosmetics. But, uh, you know, it's funny, I've, I've been playing that Esquire back there so much that I, I forgot what a great guitar this one is and, and what, uh, great sounds. It has it has its its own thing, and then just that thing at the beginning. Again, I, I was just really playing. Got to turn the verb down. Yeah, two and a half is good. Uh, that's just a good exercise for for your kind of your pick and finger things, you know, because it's. <laughs> working on your picking fingers things uh yeah work, work on that a little bit to uh, get you kind of doing that kind of alternating between the pick and the fingers that really kind of fatten things out all right guys thank you for watching we'll see you next time bye-bye <laughs>